ladies and gentlemen, Matt Hobbs. Um, a lot of you will know him already, and hopefully you've seen a system that he's recently offered to builders around the world called the Kyber system. And um, I've just set mine up and put it to good use. So I thought today we'd have a chat and uh, Matt can introduce the system to us. I've got a few questions for you, Matt, as well. Awesome. And um, we'll see where we go. How are you doing, Matt? All right? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Yeah, really well, thank you. Yeah, really good. Um, so first of all, why? So it started when I was trying to figure out there were all the little small handheld controllers that could do all the different functions, but there was not an option really to do that with RC. And with being trying to go more toward what the industry standard was, I wanted to get something in an RC controller that would allow us to have all those functions on on-call buttons. Uh, so it made it easier to activate. And what I was trying to do was do it for Wally because we had so many functions and stuff that he needed to do and so many servos that he needed to operate. I needed a way to be able to puppeteer those with one person instead of like with what Disney did, you know, with three or four people doing their controllers. Uh, so it was trying to get everything, you know, into one handheld unit. And you've done it. Exactly. It, it turned out <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, me and along with, with Stefan, uh, you know, it it, uh, it all spurred from me and him talking back and forth and working with BB-8 and then um, found out that we could do this through the PWM and through uh, the S-Bus. We could do all the different channel controls that we could control with like one of these receivers. Uh, we're able to access all 16 channels. Uh, but then we thought, well, we don't want to tie up all of those. We only want to tie up one channel if we can. Uh, so then we come up with a way to do that uh, through the custom board that we made. And now that board can take the input from the 15 buttons here and then turn that into whatever we want to. Um, another thing we wanted to do was make it really easy for the end user. Um, I'd always get here, see all the things on uh, the web about it was always hard for them to program or they had to go in and learn how to program to change the things they needed to on some of the other systems that are out there. All those systems are great, but we're just trying to get further ahead and make it where it's just a user interface that someone could then uh, just put in a number and it plays that number of sound they want to. They don't have to go in and code. And then with the maestros adding those, that adds servo control in uh, where we now it's slider based servo control. And now you can do all these programming and skits and stuff inside the maestro and you tie those to one of the buttons inside the Kyber. Uh, so then that made it really simple to start controlling uh, the actions of, of R2 or Wally. Right, well, I've, I've got to say, Matt, it was easy to do. Um, it was an easy setup. You kindly helped me with one stage, which is not your hardware or software problem. It's right. That, it's damn spectrum transmitters, uh, right. <laughs> but it's an easy fix. We got there in the end, and I'm going to do a separate tutorial on that. Um, awesome. I must say to people that are watching this now, this is more of an introduction to what your system can do. Right. Um, Matt's got some great tutorials already for setting up radio gear. I'm going to do one specific to the spectrum transmitter. Um, but yeah, there's some tutorials already out there. I'm sure Matt will build on that as the system gets used more. Right. Um, but Matt, if, if you could show your interface that we use yeah. to set the system up, just to okay. show how user friendly it is, because you know it was, it, like you say, it uses one channel. Um, there was a small amount of soldering, which is into the one of the twist knobs on the spectrum transmitter. That's the one I used. Um, so that went easy. That went well. And um, and then you connect. Once everything's fired up, you connect to this user interface. All right, so when you first start the system, this is the screen that you will see. This is just the Kyber homepage uh, that tells you a little bit uh, about the system and then also tells you the version uh, of the software that you're doing and the date that it was, uh, that it was released. Um, and then you can see at the top, you'll have the generals tab, the button tabs, uh, your Wi-Fi and your firmware update tab. So if we continue down into the general page, uh, you can see this is where you would set up uh, your basic uh, system buttons. So if, if you had maestros, you would put how many maestros you have here, and then you would set up uh, the startup uh, script. So what that does is when the when your robot starts, or uh, you can have a script that will automatically start once you power on. Once the Kyber completely powers on, uh, it will play the script that you've got recorded there. 
And then you can also set a delay for that. So if you know your system has a 30 second delay uh, before your maestros and all your servos are gonna power up, then you can set that delay there to not come on until uh, that 30 seconds has expired and then it'll play the, those startup scripts. If you do not put any quantities in there, uh, it won't show these. It's uh, If the system has zero here, then it will not show these. We've integrated the system so that it doesn't, uh, you don't have access to the things you don't need if you're not using them. So if you don't put any maestros in here, you won't see those uh, further on in the button system. But if you do put the maestros in, then you'll actually see that you can enter data into those to do a function. Um, here is for the um, if you're installing a button board that you'll buy from me, uh, it's either the 15 button board that is pre-populated, like the one Lee is using or that I'm using. And then also there is another button board that you can get that goes inside the transmitter that you can add your own buttons on. So you can add one to 15 buttons onto that board and then you custom wire those inside your transmitter. And that's for you putting them on the back of the remote um, or something like that. And then you also have the sound features, which you have your volume control. If you're not putting it on a knob uh, or a potentiometer on your transmitter, then you can set the volume here on what you want it to be. And it can be zero through 30. Uh, and then you also have the option to play a startup sound uh, when the Kyber power's on and then also be able to set that delay. And then we've also added an active equalizer uh, that the DF players have. So we added access and control of that. So you can try that and see if uh, if any of those make a difference in your sound, uh, depending on what your sound system is doing. Uh, the button RC is something new that we've added. So this is the ability to not have to connect one of the button boards that you buy from me. You can take uh, up to three, three channel switches um, or three way switches. You can take those and turn those into buttons. Uh, so then you can make so if you took one three position switch and turned it into two buttons, and we'll do a tutorial on how to do that. It's very simple to uh, do that inside your transmitter. Then you could change that into two buttons and then you could put button sounds here. And then you can also control maestros from those two. And you can see that it has the same delay function for each of the sounds and uh, the maestro controls. So if you have any little timing issues from maestro one to maestro two, during your programming cycle, then you can set some delays to make those two match up. And then also uh, your sound to make that match up to your motions. But again, that allows you to have up to six buttons on your transmitter without having to install uh, a custom uh, board on there. But that will, having those six buttons will take up three channels of your transmitter or your receiver. Um, so you just have to realize that, that that's going to be, the, it wouldn't actually take them up on the receiver, but it would take them up on your transmitter, uh, because on the receiver side, it's all running through S bus on that side. So it, it would do that. Um, what this is the button value page. So it shows different up here, it shows general, but this is the button value page listed here. Uh, and what this does is so the, but once you install one of the 15 button boards, uh, you're able to take and get a reading from what your transmitter is actually seeing. So this helps to better align the software to know that uh, when you push that button, this is what the Kyber is seeing and it will react to that button. And there's a pretty big spectrum on these. I think it's around 50 plus or minus on both sides. Um, so you'll see whenever you push a button, this number will change for what the Kyber is seeing and then you'll enter that number. Uh, one thing you need to make sure to do is make sure you have the release state. So when no buttons are pressed, you want to read this value and put that value in there. If you don't, the system won't work correctly. So that's something you have to make sure you do. And I've got to say, Matt, this was my go-to page because it's a very good way of telling that they're talking to each other, of course. Ex exactly. Yeah. And you can check it out and make sure that the Kyber is communicating with your transmitter. So this gives you a good feeling. OK, at least I've got this right. And if there's something else going wrong somewhere, it gives us a point of troubleshooting. Exactly. So, as soon as you push that button on your, your you, well, the Kyber system, as soon as you push a button on that and you see the SBUS value change, you're there. You've, you've pretty right. much done it. So uh, Exactly. Yeah. So if we go to the next page, this is your RC channels page. So this is what you set, um, what your transmitter is set on. So if you have the button pad, you installed it on switch RX or something around in there, and then you know it's assigned to 
what channel. So we usually assign channel nine for this one. Um, and the reason is that like on the, um, on the DX9 or the uh, X7, you have eight channels that you can use on your little receiver. So we try not to tie those up with these particular things. So with using the S-Bus, we can go above and beyond those on the, uh, the X7. I'm not sure if we can do that on the, um, I don't know how many channels you can work on the DX9, maybe only the nine, and that may be what you have to assign. So that'll be where Lee will go through and explain the, the channels that he actually used. But for the QX7, I assign nine through 13. So nine for the button pad, 10 for the toggle switch. And we didn't talk about that earlier, but what it is is you can assign a toggle switch. And when you have the 15 buttons installed, you can flip that two position toggle switch and get an additional 15 buttons. Um, and I'll show you that a little bit later on a different page. So you'll have two pages that you can set up. So are, you, are you telling me you can have two 15 button fiber systems on one transmitter? Exactly. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so I use that for, for different robots. So if like for R2 and R5, they use that they're the same bot, but I wanted to be able to have different control banks for them. So I've got uh, R2 on one and then I can flip the switch and I can have R5 on all the others. But if I want to cheat a little bit and get a couple of more sounds for R5, I can flip back over to R2 and those sounds are still there uh, assigned to those wow. 15 buttons. So yes, you can have a total of 36 button activations on one transmitter with this setup wow. if you utilize the full system. Um, so I, then, I want to see that transmitter map with all those buttons on. I want to see where you squeeze them all in. <laughs> I've got one here. <laughs> It's pretty close. <laughs> um, and I've got another one that's actually not here. It's it's out in California. So I'll have to get it back that has that I actually installed the custom buttons on. So those I've come to like that better than having them in center, uh, but they both have good options. Um, so if we continue along, we can see we've also got the Wi-Fi on and off. So this is how the Kyber system communicates through your computer system to um, so that you can set all your functions. So um, you don't have to plug it in or anything like that. It just needs to be powered on and then you can connect wirelessly to it through your phone or through um, a tablet or through a computer system. Uh, you can also set this onto your home network so that you can be on the computer at the same time with the internet and then be able to use that. But it has to tie into your home network and we can explain a little bit about that in a separate video. Uh, you can also set your volume control onto the transmitter itself. So you can set this on a potentiometer. You can also set it, we found out on the uh, X7, you can set it to a, uh, a trim channel. Um, so if you're not you ever using your trims or you're not using the uh, up and down trim on R2, you're just using the left and the right, then you can use that trim as your volume control, which is really cool. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, then Stefan found that out. And I was like, wow, I didn't, you can tie those. So that's four other potentiometers that you can potentially use on, uh, on the system to do different things. And then you've got the button one, two, three, four, five, and six uh, that you can also assign if you don't use the 15 button board. So something <laughs> Stefan come up with this great idea. We were doing this with BB-8, but we didn't access it through a web interface like this is that you can pass through the Kyber system or the uh, maestros. Uh, you can pass through from your transmitter through the maestro to the servo. So what this lets you do is now you can take control of a servo uh, through the maestro, but actually be able to use the maestro speed and uh, acceleration settings. So you can get some really smooth movements uh, and not have to do it, go in and actually have to program the uh, the servo itself. So then, and you can also set your limits in the Maestro. So you're not overextending uh, in either direction on your servo. So you'll save the life of, of your servo on that. And that's something we'll go through a little later too. That's something I really like about the Maestros is that instead of just an open close signal or having to go in and adjust all that for every one of your servos in code, the Maestro, you can do that by the slider base. So you, you find out what your limits are on your servo uh, so you're not slamming that door open and then trying to fight it open and end up burning your servos up. You can set it so it'll, it'll soft open into that spot and then can close back. So you're not trying to overextend the servo again by keeping that door closed. 
And then, so that's a, a really good thing and that I've been able to do uh, with several of the, the bots I'm using now is pass that signal through the Kyber to get a lot smoother motion uh, out of the servos. You can do this on the same thing that you have if you have them programmed for motion, but for the motion to activate, the servo needs to be set in home position. So it makes it a lot more complicated to try to do that with programming and try to control the servo. It can be done, but it's, it's a little bit tricky. And that's just because of the limitations in the Maestro. Um, this is what you're familiar with on setting up the button pad one. Um, so this is like for your 15 buttons that you have set up. And it's the same as what you had on the, the, the uh, RC button page. You set your description so you can just keep up with what button one is. If it's happy sounds, uh, then you put one. And then you, if you've got 20 happy sounds, you put one through 20. Uh, so that would allow you to, it'll cycle through all 20 of those and then it'll repeat back over. It does not do a random selection uh, so that you can keep from having repeated sounds. Uh, but then you can also set these as just independent sounds. So if you wanted to play just the lay of speech and you had that tied to sound six, then you would just put a six here and a six here. Uh, so you do have to have the numbers in both if you're just putting just a single sound there. And it'll just keep playing that sound for every, every time you push the button. You can also set delays. This goes into the usage of the maestro. So if you have a motion tied to that particular button and your sound is playing a couple of seconds before your motion starts, then you can delay that sound. Or you can also delay the maestros. So if you're using two maestros, you can time those, get those timed a lot more a lot better there uh, by adding some delays. And these are done in microseconds. So one second would be 1,000. Matt, how many sounds can you have um, to each button? You can have up to, I think 999 is what we have right now, sounds tied onto the, uh, the way the system works. So you could have 999 on the SD card and then if you wanted all of those on one button, then you just put a one in the minimum and 999 on the sound max. Uh, and it would play through all of those sounds. Amazing. Okay, that's cool. <clears throat> so, yeah, I've got probably 150 or two sounds on mine and I just put them in. I've got five random banks or uh, sequential banks that play happy, sad, excited. Uh, and then I've got just uh, probably the other nine are programmed to do uh, just one hit sounds or motions. And then you have one other button, which is on the generals page is your stop all function. So if you have um, a motion playing and all of a sudden a child or something runs up and you need to stop everything, you can just hit that button, all motion will stop and all sound will stop. Um, so it's like a safety stop feature. Or if you're playing a song and somebody needs to come up and wants to talk to you, you can hit that button and stop everything at that time. Uh, one thing you will want to do if you're doing that and you have motions tied, you'll also want to do a home all button. Uh, so like on 14, I have where all of my servos will go back to close position. So if I do stop in mid motion, you do want to carry everything back to home before you do another motion. Uh, because the maestro does have some limitations on knowing it doesn't know where it's at uh, once you stop it. So if you start another one, it's just going to try to go again uh, until it reaches the point where it finds that servo and then it'll start doing it again. And a lot of times you can end up having collision points that way. Uh, so you'll always want to home everything back if you do that. Um, and again, this is where we talked about you've got button one here and you have button one, button two. Uh, that's where this would be your other 15 uh, sounds that you would do. If you didn't have a stop all assigned, you could add another one there. But I do recommend using the stop all function if you have motions going. If you're just doing sound, you really don't have to, to worry about it. Um, again, the Kyber does work through Wi-Fi on uh, the setup. Uh, the communication is all RC. So we have to make absolutely clear you understand that is that all motion and all sounds are activated through your RC receiver. Uh, nothing is done through Wi-Fi, nothing is done through Bluetooth. So this is all RC. Um, but you can, with the Wi-Fi, we have the ability to do all of our programming and allow you to use this user interface. Uh, when you first get it, it will come in as Kyber 
And then the password is just the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then what you'll do is go to your computer. Once you have the Kyber powered on, go to your computer, select the Kyber network, and then you'll enter the password and then you'll uh, you'll enter the uh, address in your web browser, the 192.168.4.1, or if you're on a Mac, here's the code there. Uh, and then it will bring up the, uh, the general page and then you can go through and do all your settings. We were showing on the other page is that you, can have, you have a Wi-Fi on and off switch. So you can assign one of your two position switches to cut that Wi-Fi off. So if you're at a con, you can cut that off and no one can have access to your Wi-Fi to be able to. The only thing they could do is, is just mess with your button settings or something like that. They can't activate anything from uh, the Wi-Fi system. So they couldn't mess with anything with your droid, but they could mess up all your programming or your settings that you have in there. And then we have the station here, which this is where you can set up to allow the Kyber to sign into your network. Uh, and we've made it where if your network is not available, it'll automatically go back into AP mode. So then you could sign into uh, the network through your phone or through a tablet or something. And then the final page we have is the firmware upgrade. Um, this is, we've got a separate Facebook page that provides um, updates for the Kyber. Once we do a couple of things and we can talk about what we're thinking about going for in the future a little bit later. Uh, but this is where you will select the file here where you've uh, downloaded it from. And then you'll hit this upload button. It'll go through, upload the software. Just don't turn it off until uh, you see the blue flashing light again on your Kyber. And once you do, you'll have to reset uh, your, cause it, it kills the, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi network. So you'll have to reset the Wi-Fi network and go back from there. But we will do a tutorial on that once we get to the point of actually having to upgrade the firmware, if you if, if you so choose to, uh, and if we find any bugs through people starting to uh, to use it out in the field. Um, so Matt, what, what radios are you using for your system? What's your go-to transmitter? Uh, the X7 has been my go-to just because it's, it's simple and easy to, uh, to modify, and I really like the OpenX, uh, OpenTX software on these. Um, and after I started with the Spectrum, and you're just very limited on what you can do in those. They're very, they're great transmitters, but there's just not a, you can't adjust enough of the functions or as much as what you can do on one of these. And plus, these are, if you get them on a sale, you can get them for about 119 bucks. Um, wow, if not, they're crazy. around 150 bucks, and they're eight channels. Um, but then with, they can run two transmitter or two receivers. Uh, so then you can run, they made it where you can run 16 channels on these things. Um, but with the S bus, you can run one receiver and, um, have all access to all 16 channels. If you're using, um, you know, something that connect to the S bus, just like the Kyber does, they make a lot of things that connect to those telemetry devices and everything. And that, that transmitter is ready to go with S bus. Is that right? It is correct. Okay. Because as, as I found out, and as, as you make clear to people anyway on your Facebook page, that the Spectrum does not like SBUS. It doesn't, it doesn't use, you can't use standard Spectrum receivers for SBUS to work. Right. So you have to buy an additional receiver, which I think cost me about $30, something like that. So it wasn't too expensive. Then you have to program the receiver to know that it's going to be functioning using SBUS, which is fine, which is straightforward. Um, and then it worked. So this, this is mine. This is what I'm using. Um, I have got a turn stick on here as well. Whoops. So um, I've got that, which I haven't actually connected it to anything yet, but um, that's going to be hopefully used for BB-8. And then I've, similar to what you've done, a bit of a cheaper version though. I've just done a sticker yep. with the description. Um, and what is great as well, I will say, Matt, you've kindly done some CAD as well, haven't you? For the button, to hold the buttons and to right. attach it to the transmitter. So that I slightly altered that. And I've done the same. So I've used your CAD and um, just done a spectrum attachment. You just undo two bolts that are already on the spectrum, just extend the bolts, and it just bolts back into place. So it's quite. Yeah, I mean, if we can look at adapting that. Since you've got that idea of doing that, I can look at adapting one just for the, the DX9 uh, for the spectrum. They're all basically the same DX6, DX9. They're the same housing almost, right? Yeah, well, I'm happy to share. I'm happy to share that file. So I'll. Oh, I'll fantastic. Share. 
Yeah. You have a look yeah. at it and you can put it on the group or whatever. But... Yeah, just put it up on the group. It'll go into the file section. So uh, that'll be fantastic. It's, it's proven to be fine. I used it at a wedding for three hours. It was amazing. It was great. Um, I must confess, I had the Markduino system set up as well, just as a backup, just in case. Didn't need to use it. Um, so job well done, sir. You know, I'm, I'm nice. really impressed. And that's why we're here now, because I think people should be made aware of this. Okay. And, um, cool. you know, consider it as an option for sure. Yes. Um, so you've you've set up a Facebook page, haven't you? Is that where people, the best place for people to go? That's the best place. Or you can go to the uh, the R2 forum, the Astromech uh, forum, and then we've got, I've got a sale page there or a link uh, that you can get to the Facebook page there. Uh, but yeah, just search for Kyber Controls System and uh, the Facebook page will pop up and then we'll accept you in. Uh, just Apple, ask a couple of the, uh, answer a couple of the questions and you'll be in. Right. And then once you buy the Kyber system, you get added to the update page uh, and then you'll get all the update information. Oh, that's great. I must add, actually, you mentioned about the um, volume control and so on. I actually put the volume control on this on this thumb control here and um, which is really nice. It's, you know, it's quite it's quite tactile there. It's a good position for that to be. Yeah. And uh, if you think it's too loud or not loud enough, you can quickly get to it. And increase the volume rather than finding the button you know and having to push a button and so on it's it's a nice system to have i haven't tried the other things yet so i don't know how the spectrum would handle the wi-fi on and off and so on but um yeah. you know it, should it, be what I wanted it, to do. it was great good good and the volume feature to me is fantastic the first one i've had that actually i could control the volume on except for i had the mark duino on the uh, the mouse droid so on the little stick i could control the volume up and down uh so having that ability on the other droids is fantastic because you never know your con environment or your wedding environment is going to be very dynamic uh, compared to being quiet or loud. So uh, it helps to have that ability. Of course. And we must be clear here, this is not just for Astromix. You know, it's for all droids. And exactly. You like you say, you use it for Wally, -E, and um, I know you use it for Dio as well. And mm -hmm. um, of course, R2. But they can be applied to any any droid, robots, any animatronic type. Yeah, we've got them going on Johnny Fives. We've got them in Daleks. So all of the the one anybody that's using sound and trying to tie motion together uh, with sound and wanting to use an RC controller can uh, can use this for their for their droids. And what about the future, Matt? What what other plans have you got for the system? Is there anything? That you can there share is. That you uh, one on. of the things that we're working on now is we've had several requests to be able to tie this into the Marduino system. Um, the only function I could really see that would, well, the people that already have everything programmed and it's already working the way they want it to, then we can just like you saw on the side where it said Maestro, it would just have another uh, Marduino column and then you would just enter the code that you wanted to activate with that button. So if you wanted to be able to change the color of all your lights, you would hit that button and then it would signal the Marduino and then it would do all of that, uh, those functions there. Um, <clears throat> another thing you can do with it now through the Maestro is that you can also trigger things on and off. Um, so if you wanted to trigger another relay, uh, you can set the maestro as an output and what that will do is output five volts um, and then you can trigger a relay with that that then can cut lights on or lights off uh, so you could also use any of your button combinations to be able to to turn lights off or to turn a zapper on and off or something like that through the button control that's cool um, i think that's the biggest plan right now we have for it uh, once that one gets done that's the biggest code change and getting it to work um, I haven't had any other real requests to do anything yet, but if anybody does have a request that they would want the system to do, uh, just reach out to us and let us know or uh, put a question up on the Kyber page and then we'll get a reaction how everyone feels about it and, and see if it's something we want to uh, put our time into. So if, you are, if you're looking for a quest, Matt, um, I've got a request for you. How about random sounds? Just push a button and let it cycle through sounds. Yeah, so that's one thing we're working on now. Uh, and we're also going to add uh, automatic dome rotation for R2. Uh, you will have to modify your dome or add a potentiometer, and we're working on several ways to do that. But you'll be able to flip a switch, and that'll put uh, your droid into automatic mode. And what it'll do is you can put your sound, the number of sounds you want to play. So if you want it to go all the way through 
one through 199 or 999. You can just put those in there. It'll play through those sounds and then it'll it'll move his dome within just a fixed range so that that he's just kind of looks like he's alive. So he's not uh, just sitting there not doing anything. So that is in the works. Nice. Nice. I'll, I'll have that on set with me. I think that'll be a, a nice addition. I can go and have more coffees while uh, R2 is performing. Nice. <laughs> if you do that, let, it, let me know. That would be amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That's good. Is there anything else, Matt? I don't think so. I think that covers the system, basically. Um, appreciate you guys taking the time to talk with me about it. My pleasure. My pleasure. Matt, thank you for your time. I know you're packing for con now, aren't you? You're, you're yes. off tomorrow to a yes, con? Yes, we're leaving in the morning for Megacon, so this this will let you know how it goes. How exciting. Be great. Like- we've, got, we've got more droids packed in there than I ever have. We've got Wally, we've got R5, we've got the new pit droid bike, we've got a mouse droid, we've got BB-8, uh, all packed in one van. So. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what then, Matt, no pressure, but what I'll get you to do then is please send me a photo of all the droids at Megacon, and we'll I'll tag it onto the end of this video so people can see your impressive layout. That'll work. <laughs> Good man. Well, thank you for your time, Matt, and um, hopefully I'll be over to the US soon and we can catch up for a bit. Definitely, definitely. Good man. Looking forward okay. to it. Thank See you. Bye.